Welcome to On the Edge with Deneen Dias, coming at you live from the AICPA Engage Conference in Vegas. Today, my guest is Aaron Stark from ADP. Aaron, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, everybody. Aaron Stark, DVP of Channel Strategy for ADP. I have the distinct pleasure of working with all of our partners and helping to serve the accountant community, along with our bank partners and broker partners for our down market portfolio at ADP. So, Aaron, thank you for joining with me today. Thank you for having me. We, it's ADP and Blackkeeper Partners, and we thought what better utilization of our time together here in person to talk about all the neat things we're doing together for the profession. And it's been an interesting three days. Yes. And the key thing that Aaron and I were talking about sharing on the edge is the key topic here at the Engage Conference. Uh, and it is? Talent. Talent. That, whatever you want to call it, the war on talent, the great resignation that's happening right now. There's a lot of key phrases that are going on. At all industries. But the way it's affecting our audience, the accountants profession, I think it's a perfect storm. With the PPP last year, um, the, obviously, I mean, ADP helped the most with the PPP, but I think firms are just stressed, right? They're overworked, they're exhausted. I've never heard so much in this profession about mental health as I have here. People are concerned about their talent. Sure. And the town is leaving the profession. They're not just going to another firm. They're leaving overall. And I know that this is something that, you know, obviously ADP is working on. I'd love for you to kind of share with your strategy or how you're working with firms. Yeah, I think it's a compilation of things, right? So you have kind of like this entire spectrum of how to find the right talent, right? You mentioned before that the benefits that you could offer and the benefits are not just health and benefits or retirement. It's also like that mental wellness, that connection, like the tools and resources to stay and have that that tissue that, that brings you together with your staff. So that way you know what they're doing. Like you consider this remote environment, this work from home environment, you don't get a chance to see people and get the pulse on how they're feeling, how they're doing. Uh, so it's really it's making sure that you're equipping not just the client, but even the firm with the knowledge of what's out there that they can then consult and advise their clients on how to make sure that they're attracting and retaining you know, their most precious commodity, which is their people. Yeah, it's true. Uh, well, so one of the things I'd love to, to shift and sort of talk about is our partnership mm -hmm. and really sort of with that in mind, what that partnership is bringing to the profession. And I think firms, we've talked about this, right? Firms are used to outsourcing people. They're not used to outsourcing bookkeeping. Right. Um, but because the talent is taxed and stressed and they're missing their deadlines and they're missing time with their families, there's so many things. That's where this partnership is so important. Partnering Blackkeeper with ADP, bookkeeping and payroll, in a way that the firms can use the, the technology to take on more clients and give their staff a break. Uh, so I, you and I have talked a lot about this. I'd love to just hear your perspective on that. Yeah. The, the legacy models of how I used to run a practice and the expectations that a client would have for their firm, and I don't want to say they've changed, they've evolved, right? Like right. people, I think, when it comes to technology, have this expectation that you are implementing those things to spend more time on the advisory, the strategic versus the tactical. And if you're if you're not exploring those options, right, for your firm, and, and not just the technology, but also how to implement them, right? Having that good balance of both technology yeah. and service. Um, because you could have the greatest technology in the world if you don't have the right service behind it and get it into, you know, get it into the system and That's be right. able to utilize it means nothing. Um, but once you do, like that time that you can now spend looking at a lot of the information that you were probably punching in previously right. is, it's like sexy information now, Absolutely. right? Like payroll yeah. has become sexy to the point where, you know, your point before about PPP and now just this information about employee trends, like which clients are hiring employees, which clients might have attrition, and being able to be proactive with that information. If you're in the weeds with it, then you can't see it. Like you don't have that purview to I make, agree. you know, educated decisions or at least have those proactive conversations to even inquire your client as a need in that area. And usually, if you, you know, the byproduct of all of that, if you don't, is the client's going to reach out to you, right, right, in a reactive manner. And you know, if you're not prepared for those conversations. Yeah, they might start to look for alternative options yeah. that have that full ecosystem available. Yeah, I mean, firms learned that hardcore last year, totally. that they had to look at the payroll data in a whole new way, they're forced to. So it, it was forcing that shift and digitizing, right? It forced that shift. But here we are now, and what can we learn from that? 
and how can we use that ongoing, like that knowledge, that experience, and then the tools like ADC? Yeah, so I think to your point, it was a little bit of an exposure of the seams, right? right. Over the past you know, year, year and a half, um, I think many firms have caught up. Uh, and now it's a matter of actually, what's next? Mm -hmm. And I think it is this people strategy piece, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so the, the, the data that was inherent in payroll and being able to help facilitate these loans and now the forgiveness piece, mm -hmm. like that's all going to come to fruition, right? And it's going to culminate in hopefully more people working, right? Mm -hmm. And more people then exploring different options, whether it's within your company or potentially outside your company. And by the way, when I say company, it's the clients that we serve in the accounting right. profession, but also within the accounting profession itself. Right, going right. from firm to firm, and, and the type of work too that I think people are looking to to do, yeah. especially in this profession. I don't know if I wake up in the morning looking to crunch numbers, right, or or input data. Like, you know, I, I think there's this: how can I help serve a greater good for the client and be able to look at that information and provide advice where I know I'm making an impact to the people I serve. I agree. Um, so I, I think agree. that's the next. Well, I, I mean, the, the type of person that goes into accounting, the reason they're drawn to accounting is the numbers, but they care about the businesses. Totally. They want, what they care about is their customers. They want to help their customers. And and the profession worked so hard last year to keep their businesses in business, right? To help their their businesses stay in business to get the loans to maybe furlough some talent and bring them back when it was the right time or change salaries so that they could still employ people. I mean, there's so much strategy. Firms work so hard. Um, so that shift is happening. Um, but I think that uh, what firms need to do is think about hiring in different types of talent and bringing those data analytical people bringing people that are really good at problem solving, bringing in people that are really good at teaming, yeah. the things that make people human, and and not just crunching the numbers, but right. having those business conversations and attracting that type of talent to the firm. Totally, and I think it's a, it's a healthy balance of attracting the new talent, right, that has the area of expertise, which I actually heard Barry talk about it today in, Did you? in one of the breakout Please. sessions. Please, yeah. He, I mean, he talked about how they're going to try to build a new skill set within the accounting community, right? So you can bring in people from different works of data analytics and you know, um, and those that you know have that DNA already. But and, and this might be my interpretation of what Barry said. But I think there's two things that you look for in talent, right? You look for skill and will. And if the person has the will, if you, you can, can teach, teach them the skill, skill, right? And they're yes. willing to absorb it. Then you don't necessarily need to get rid of the people that you already have. They're good people, right? right. Like it, People, and, and by the way, there's this appetite within, I think, the inherency of the people that we have, that they are willing to do it, to learn more and to grow. Because they've seen what these clients are expecting. As long, if we can then give them the tools that can make them more well-rounded in these areas. And it was exciting to kind of hear like what the next evolution of the CPA exam is going to include, right. you know, to, to, to really kind of bring this it, to, it, the to almost force the profession to, to go in that direction. To be a little bit more balanced. That's great. Yeah. 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 I missed that session. So, what else did Barry say that, <laughs> that you can I, I share? Mean, I'm probably not going to do any justice to uh, <laughs> to it. But you know, I think you know his underlying sentiment about what you were referencing before this profession, had, like being so well positioned for longevity of success, was right. one of the biggest things that I took from it. You're coming from somebody that has to continue to serve this profession and provide the tools and solutions to help complement what they do for their clients. Right. What I heard from him was first line of defense over the last 18 months, right? Longer hours, either the same or sometimes less revenue, but the appreciation for what this profession did and really where the economy is at today wouldn't be there without, you know, our accountant frontline. Yeah. So I think there was this level of very, you know, pride that came from that yeah. session this morning, talking yeah. about the future of, of and, and you heard the word advisory about 700,000 times. So, <laughs> so the, that, that's where I, that's why I came to Blackkeeper, right? I really believe that AI is the future for the profession. And what Blackkeeper is wanting to do is enable firms to adapt, to thrive. Uh, and we hit no, those two I'm key areas that you just discussed, totally. right? We hit helping free up talent, giving them a chance to breathe, because then they bring us into the firm. We free up the talent's capacity to be able to either take on more clients. But when I looked at the majority of firms that have been partnered with Blackkeeper in the last month, 95% said they wanted to free up their talent to do more 
advisory. And we've been telling firms to shift to advisory for years, but I'm seeing it happen more this year. Firms feel more ready, and I do believe it's what they learned through the PPP and the So I, I have to admit, I totally forgot to say this. And now that you've just admitted that you weren't in the session <laughs> earlier today, Eric uh, from CPA.com. Eric Askerson? Yeah. Uh -huh. he, uh, he came on, one of the questions that they posed to the panel was, what are some of the things that maybe they haven't truly embraced just yet? Okay. What do you think he said? Technology? Yeah. Specific technology. AI and machine learning. Oh, did he? He did. He oh, called great. it out. I was actually looking for you in the crowd. And I, you mentioned we met it, with him like, yesterday. I was waiting for you to do a little standing up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was, I, yeah, it. I mean, I think his, his take on it is in order to, because yeah. the advisory, and it's funny, I think Jody and I are going to be talking about this later. Yes. Th this profession is doing it forever, right? right? Regardless of what you want to yeah. call it, what adjective that you want to insert. But the reality is that next level of advisory services, unless you embrace AI and machine learning, you're not going to be able to do that. And when you look at some of the bigger firms that are out there, they are, they right? Are. And there are ways that you can do this through scale. Doesn't matter companies what like size. Exactly. So, yeah. I agree. <laughs> well, and I you know, as I've talked, honestly, I've done a lot of research around AI, looked a lot into it before I came to Botkeeper, and now that I'm at Botkeeper, it's, a, it's what we talked about from learning so much. But the more I learn, and you hear a lot that talent feels like they're being replaced, and we say they're not being replaced, their job is changing, but it, they're going to a place they love. So they're going to a place where they're not, they're able to have time with their family. They're not burnt out. They're able to, um, their work is accurate so they can scale and grow, but they're able to work with more businesses, which is ultimately what they want to do. So don't fight the technology. Um, it's going to happen anyway. Right. And, and just embrace it in a way of like, how can this make my life better? And that's really, again, what I feel like the power between our two companies combined is looking at ways you can use the technology within the firm to empower you to work with clients more. We want to work with the firms that want to work with the business. We don't want to compete. So I, I, and, I mean, listen, our two organizations from, power, from a parallel standpoint are completely aligned when it comes to how do we provide you with the right technology, balance with the right service so that we can implement it and use it so that way, when you are sitting in front of your client or when you make that phone call to the client, it is meaningful right. information, the right information and that client's going to remember the experiences and tell a friend. Right? And like, that's what we're in this for is, you know, you know, both the retention of our clients and hopefully you know, further expansion, whether it's through the base that we have today or through new businesses that are coming into the portfolio. Um, and I think that's the, again, that, like, that expectation that this new era of clients, but even the existing clients, they, they are looking for more. And they are. the only way to do that is to leverage resources that can help you get there. They are asking for more. They're definitely asking for more from the firms, but they are going to the firms because they have that trusted relationship. That's right. And I think one of the firms that we both work with and I talked to about how they're scaling and growing as a large firm, and they said, we tell all of our talent that automation is changing their job. We tell all the talent in all of our meetings that the automation is going to change their job. So they have to shift faster. But what they tell their talent is you want to start telling stories with the client's numbers. Explain to the client their information in a story that resonates with them. And I thought that was, I'd never heard it that way before. So can I give you an exciting story that literally just happened yesterday? Yes. So uh, we just launched our client insights, right? Use a popular term, uh, but we use our client insights tool in Accountant Connect where it actually enables a firm to see employee trends, right? The data, oh, right? And the information. Sure. And it can tell you if a client has an expansion of employees or a contraction of employees. And they noticed when they went in there for the first time to experience this, that one of their connected clients with ADP hired 35 employees over the last 90 days. And wow. they had no idea before they saw this information. And they reached out and just said, hey, I see that you guys are doing pretty well. What's going on? That's, that's great. And, you know, the, again, it was a proactive outbound that's call wonderful. to the client based on the data that you're talking about to have a meaningful, intentful growth mindset conversation. That's where we're going. That's, that's, where, that's where this is going. So. Tell me more about this tool. This is the first I'm hearing about this. Yeah, so, I mean, we've been working. Uh, I don't want to say that we're profits by any stretch of the imagination, but pre-pandemic, like, we saw that there was definitely this drive and this client expectation or how the firms were surfacing around uh, data, around new emerging technologies. And uh, I think the one piece was that people strategy side. 
And all these things combined, we saw an opportunity in uh, Account Connect, 35,000 firms, 200,000 connected clients that we uh, managed together. And we wanted to be able to not only allow them to download reports and have the access from anywhere at any time with all these other additional resources, but imagine with the click of a button, if I can see how many employees that they've added, how many employees that have come out, what product suite do they have, and are they well equipped to either handle that growth or mitigate some of the challenges with the attrition? Are they opening up in new jurisdictions with this whole return to work, but it's hybrid and wow. you know, work from home and remote work? Are they hiring employees in different states? Wow. I now have access to which clients are doing that real time to enable these you know, really productive conversations. Yeah, well, and that, that's another thing. I mean, Botkeeper is a virtual company. We're based in Boston, but we're a virtual company. I couldn't work for Botkeeper because I don't live in Boston if they weren't opening to hiring top talent. And they're opening to hiring top talent wherever you are. They want to bring the talent. And so even prior to COVID, Botkeeper had that model where we were a virtual um, community. Um, but are you, I, is the data showing that? Is that these oh, businesses yeah. now are opening or hiring top talent anywhere and they're I mean, more open to that? I mean, we see it in a variety of different KPIs or data sets where the jurisdictions, but also if you actually double click into some of the resumes on where you have to live and where you have to work and, you know, and how many days that you're requested to come to the office, that flexibility that you need to provide. And listen, it's based on industry and professions, but you really need to be thinking about like that, you know, is the way that you did it 18 months ago, the same mm -hmm. way that it needs to be done today. And can you provide that optionality to the talent that you're trying to attract in? And if you don't, mm -hmm. just know that there are others that may. I find it fascinating. And, and it is all about the data. And you have the payroll data, but you have so much more data than just that. Um, and how are you bringing all of that, to, continuing to bring all of that to the firm? Because I've heard, learned a little bit since working with you, but yeah. it's fascinating. It's all about the data. So how are we? It's trusted data. Like where's the data coming from? And I think one of the advantages that we have, 75 years in the industry, we aggregate and anonymize over 30 million paid employees across all 50 states over 200 industries and it gives us the ability to then cool. sort and you know provide that in a tangible digestible fashion to then make very quick educated conversations with your clients. yeah it really is i think it's fun yeah, it I, is I, fun I, I get into i get a little geeky yeah. into that kind of things too uh so i always like to um talk about what's next and so i'd love from your again you know where you sit in your mm -hmm. profession and in your career what do you think is next for firms, but really what do you think is next for ADT with firms? Yeah, so I, I think it is just this continuation, the continuum of interpretation of data and information, that proactive nature that we need to continue to serve, but it's also got to be in, uh, I, I fear keep saying this because somebody's going to steal it, I don't know if it's <laughs> trademarked or not, but like actionable intelligence. Yeah. When something pops up to be able to take immediate action I like upon, those, uh, upon those events to have a conversation, and not that it's going to, you know, in some cases it might actually um, prevent something from happening or it could accelerate something, uh, something that you want to happen within one of your clients. And it's just going to be those continuous uh, changes and adaptations to how we use the data mm -hmm. that is going to differentiate one firm versus another, right? Because mm -hmm. eventually, like we talk about payroll and we always used to have this conversation with firms, well, what makes your payroll different than the guy that's down the block or the girl down the block that's doing payroll? And now it's going to be, well, what makes your data different yeah. than this person's data? And how do you use it different than how they use it? So I think it's just going to be that battle for, you know, this uh, this way in which we interpret. Um, I think that's a big piece of it, too, is just Great. understanding how to interpret it and then how to coach and advise on it. And and the last piece is, how do we take advantage of this, right? Like we are in a you know somewhat it's capitalistic society where there is an opportunity here for us to build revenues around these conversations. Because right? it's not going to be intelligence, actionable intelligence. <laughs> I'm stealing that. <laughs> uh, and, and so it's the way, it's the world we live in right now though. I mean, we're all used to gathering all the information we want from our cell phones, right? We want instant gratification and business owners want that now. They're demanding that from firms and they're leaving firms that aren't giving them that right. immediate information. They don't want to wait a month for their cash flow. They want to see their cash flow now. 
And so you're taking it a step further, not just like seeing their numbers immediately, but how the, what's the action that they should be taking on the, the information. Yeah, because if I get the information at the end of the month, that's great. Something could have happened in between, Yeah. right? Like there, there's, you know, we live in a, you know, we live in a microwave society. Like I want it in 30 <laughs> seconds or less. And again, it's just how they, and I'd say the last piece too, as far as at least our profession, is it always used to be how do we not only serve the accountants but also serve uh the, you know clients that they then serve we're also seeing this dynamic of how the employees of those clients are now driving decision making for the client which the accountant needs to have in consideration okay to and it goes back to that talent piece where if i'm in you know the next gen you know worker you know millennial gen z whatever it is that you want to call it I'm going to look for a company that leverages yeah. technology. Right. And if I, as the firm, are not coaching my organization on how to have mobile applications, you know, you know real-time pay on, on from a payroll standpoint and access to my retirement benefits, all from, to your point, that mobile device. Mm -hmm. What do you say? I have a paper paycheck? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen one of those in, like, I don't know, since my daughter was born. And we're talking a decade ago. So, I mean, I think those are just some of the pieces, too. Clearly, ADP has so many tools. And are the firms taking advantage of them? Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, the adapt the adoption of these tools is a matter of first awareness, right? Like it's the whole marketing spectrum, right? Like how do you bring awareness to it first? Then it's a matter of how do I test it, you know, and, and start to get acclimated to it. So I think we're in that first infancy stage of the awareness okay. piece, like even you know for somebody that sure, exactly. uh, you know is close to you know, the to, industry. Right? I mean, the, yeah. the reality is that you know there's a lot of firms out there. And as, as big as uh, you know, some people perceive ADP to be, it still takes time to get some of that messaging out there. Okay. And then how do they start to use it? And then I think we're going to see that acceleration of you know, the adoption and the implementation okay. and then really just uh, the, the success stories. Again, you know, we're very short in, the, uh, in that curve we or early in that curve. We are and we're on. already hearing these success stories of how firms that's are great. very quickly seeing it. And, and that's their Able first glimpse. To... That's their first. They haven't even double clicked yet. So Fabulous. I think that's, um, and, and again, it, the same exists in your, in, in your world and how, you know, the, the parity between, you know, bringing that manual information in and then having the, the time to then say, okay, here's the service I'm... level, but can I go deeper and deeper and deeper? <laughs> and that's where, you know, that's where the gold is, right? It's definitely, and getting the, the, the talent comfortable and confidence and starting to at least have those conversations. That's right. Once there's, they're uncomfortable. They, it's a new muscle that they need to build totally. and but encouraging them to take that step to launch off the edge of yeah. a building <laughs> that's also advice that they've never right. like they know how to give it they're almost somewhat in certain cases they don't timid want to give because, wrong advice that's right that's mm -hmm. right so I, I mean a former mentor of mine gave uh good advice mm -hmm. as far as you know anything that you're trying new just fail fast right like fail you're fast. gonna do it right and the data enables you to do that Learn. right because if you're not if you're if you're caught in the weeds again like and you fail then you got to go back into the weeds and recrop it right now like you can give a piece of advice but then you can quickly alter based on the data giving you real-time updates on whether or not it's actually making a change in you know how you uh, so cool. yeah so cool. yeah thank you so much it was Aaron. a pleasure thank you for having me I this is awesome stopping by the box keeper one more night to go you're gonna make i know it i don't no. know <laughs> <laughs> we'll see yeah. um, but thank you everybody for participating on the edge uh, we look forward, I'm going to look to see if you had any answers, and we look forward to hearing from you. How can people get in touch with you? Uh, you can reach us at uh, adp.com. If you go to our partner section, there's an inquiry page where you can submit uh, any questions or feedback that you have here for ADP. Uh, and as far as Aaron, uh, aaron.stark at adp.com, you can reach out to me directly. I'd love to hear from you, and, uh, and hopefully we'll get a chance to do this again soon. I would love to. And if you're not on Accounts Connect yet... And if you're not an accountant connected, you can go to uh, adp.com, uh, adp.com, which is Accountant Connect, and you can register. It's completely complimentary so for all resources. of our firms. Yeah. We have 34,000 that have already joined. Please be 34,001. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.